the recent balance patch has changed a lot of ships. One of the ships is the Typhoon 2. The ship did receive a new bonus and overall the other stats have been slightly reworked. Now, uh, this Typhoon is going to be my primary PvP battleship very soon. I believe I will be flying this ship after I finish with the Hyperion. And I still see that uh, the Typhoon still has these things hanging off the hull. I am starting to actually like them and I hope that these things stay on the ship. It kind of looks interesting, I don't know, it makes the hull look kind of, kind of a little bit better. Now let's take a look at this ship's bonus now. So the Typhoon uh, is a Mimater battleship that uses missiles. Large missile torpedo operation bonus will give you minus 5% large missile torpedo activation time and plus 12.5% large missile torpedo explosion velocity. Very nice. These these explosion bonuses are actually better on this ship than on the Barghest. And the battleship command bonus pedal will give you plus 75% scan resolution and the new one plus 5% large missile torpedo flight velocity. So this ship received faster missiles and overall has excellent damage application. The best damage application out of any out of any battleship with missiles in the game. I thought that the Barghest was the best one, but the Typhoon has the best damage application. Ship has two drones, eight high slots, four medium slots, six low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. The Typhoon can be both a shield and armor tank, in my case I like to use the ship as a shield tank, but if you like the armor tank that works as well. And the rest of the stats are roughly the same. Overall a very very nice battleship. It's also very fast, one of the fastest battleships in the game. The fastest battleship is the Nestor, I achieved 3.5 km per second on that thing. That, that ship is ridiculous. And I think the Nestor did receive a couple uh, new stats and the overall bonuses were improved. So uh, I'll definitely be flying that ship again just to see how fast and how much DPS I can get uh, out of the Nestor. But for now, uh, for today, I'll be flying the Typhoon. Now for this part uh, I will show you uh, my builds and the overall builds that I will use on the Typhoon 2. Current missiles have large rapid missile launchers. I like the large rapid missile launchers. They are both good at shooting down battleships, battle cruisers, cruisers, frigates, interceptors. They are generally excellent uh, for basically everything in uh, in the game. They're going 5.9 km per second, 140 meter per second explosion velocity, 79.3 meter is the explosion radius, 56.87 km is the missile range. So that's pretty good. It can easily shoot down cruisers, it can easily shoot down frigates, and you don't have to worry about long range tackle interceptors, you can easily shoot down those as well. In the medium slots I have one tracking disruptor, guidance disruptor, one web and a scrambler. I use a mic web drive, dual adaptives, capacitor battery. These are the C type adaptives, okay just to make sure. One hook missile guidance computer. I start to prefer range on the missiles and explosion radius and explosion velocity over raw damage on the missiles because the Typhoon is all about the damage application. It does apply damage a lot better than the other battleships, including the Barghest. As for the other fit, you can easily swap uh, the medium slots with a web. You can easily go dual web, dual Nosferatu, to dual neutralizer. Target painter also works really well. Overall, I would place uh, this current fit with a tracking disruptor and a guidance disruptor if you are running missions in low sec easily preventing other ships from doing damage to you and forcing them to actually get closer to you well within the web and scrambler range especially effective against interceptors 
and other uh, fast ships that rely on range in order to apply damage, including the Ortus. The Typhoon is one of the one of the deadliest ships to fight with an Ortus because of the damage application and missile range that you can have. These are the stats on the tracking disruptor. Again, very good against uh, small ships that use turrets. Very good against practically all ships that use turrets. And the guidance disruptor is good against all ships that use missiles, including interceptors, frigates, battleships, and things like that. It will force an interceptor to actually get close to you in order to start doing some damage to you. And once an interceptor gets close to this ship, well, it's, it's very much dead. Now, uh, the other fit that I did play around with is with dual missile guidance computers. It gives ridiculous range on the rapid missiles, and of course other stats are getting improved. Faster explosion velocity, smaller explosion radius, and of course longer range. 60.93 km cold range with dual missile guidance computers. You can use a afterburner with dual Nosferatus on the Typhoon without a problem. This ship isn't known to be the tankiest battleship. The Typhoon is fast, so it kind of relies on avoiding damage. So a speed tank does surprisingly work really well on the Typhoon. You can easily speed tank low sec missions, storyline missions and encounters orbiting at 55-50 kilometers and you should be safe. Now, you can technically use a ballistic control, however, uh, you have to remember that they have been slightly reworked and now the cooldown effect of, the, of all the weapon enhancement modules has been greatly increased. These are the rigs. I use dual 4P and one 3P rig integration on the Typhoon. Basically, I want to improve the missile velocity, the missile range, explosion velocity, and explosion radius. That's the primary thing that I want with the Typhoon, and I'll be using this exact. I'll be, I'll be using these exact rigs for PvP as well. If you don't want to spend around 3 billion in rigs, then uh, I recommend that you go to improve the missile range, explosion velocity, and I would improve the explosion radius. Those are the three primary, three primary missile parameters that you want to go for with the Typhoon. You want to improve the damage application as much as possible. And again, uh, here we can take a look at the stats. Will be interesting to see the active stats when the missile guidance computers are activated. I expect around 100 km range with with rapid missiles, or 120 km range with dual uh, dual guidance computers running. So I'm very excited to see how ridiculous the range on the rapid missiles will be on the on the typhoon now uh, you can also use cruise missiles uh, for the long-range combat cruise missiles have very nice velocity they have okay uh, explosion radius and an okay explosion velocity however the range is ridiculous 179 km with the c-type large missile launchers or the C-type cruise missiles, they have 22.2 seconds flight time below 10 seconds. The range, well, the range is ridiculous. You can easily orbit manually at 160 kilometers and you can practically do storyline missions. You can do PvP if you like, encounters, and you don't have to worry about any ship that will jump in your mission. Now, uh, I will most likely use a capacitor battery on my Typhoon alongside with the micro drive. And if you have capacitor batteries, you can easily use dual neutralizers. Sacrificing one guidance computer reduced my range to 167 kilometers, and some other parameters have been affected as well, but the change is minimal. 
and overall uh, if you need capacitor and if you want to fit neutralizers then the capacitor batteries on this ship are a very nice and valid choice and you can also uh, fit the tracking and guidance disruptor against interceptors, frigates, cruisers or anything else that can easily tackle your ship at a safe range although I'm not quite sure if there is something called safe range if you are fighting a typhoon now I don't use torpedoes that often but here you can take a look at the torpedo stats they're good at close to medium range with the typhoon you can get around 50 km range with the torpedoes currently 32.96 kilometers with one guidance computer and that's very nice but I don't use missile I don't use uh, large torpedoes that often you can also swap the disruptors into neutralizers and a Nosferatu if you like and of course you can use a afterburner or a micro updrive depends on what you need at the time but with torpedoes I would say a afterburner is really good because you are going to be fighting at a close range now I know uh, a lot of you will be interested to see the difference between the missiles on the Typhoon and the missiles on the Space Pan, so I have luckily one Space Pan available and let's take a look at the Rapid Missile Launchers. Now, first uh, you will notice that the um, missile velocity is ridiculous, 14 km per second. Again, that's from the Robons. Mordor ships have the fastest and the nastiest damage on the missiles. However, the application of that damage is going to be a little bit slower than on the Typhoon. You can see the difference in the explosion velocity and explosion radius. And they have a little bit more range uh, than the other ships. 66 km range with the rapid missiles. With cruise missiles, 20 km per second missiles, almost. 19 km per second at the moment. The explosion velocity, 111. Radius, 197 meters. Range 195. All right. Well, this is this is ridiculous. The range on the cruise missiles on this Bargast on this space pen is kind of kind of very silly, and I like the fact that the range on the cruise missiles on this is silly. The Bargast is one of the only one of the only battleships that can easily kite dreadnoughts and carriers. I mean that's their purpose after all. They're very good ships. And here you can take a look at the torpedo launcher range and other stats. 8.9 km per second torpedoes on the Bargast. Very interesting. So, uh, let's take a look at the active stats on the Typhoon and of course at the velocity. I remember the velocity was around 1.8 km per second. I think it is still 1.8 uh, km per second. The DPS is the same, of course, the resistance looks pretty nice, again, you can improve the resistance on this ship if you want, but this ship, after all, relies on long range and speed to avoid damage. But if you want to go for a tank, you just need to cover the EM and thermal resistance hole and you should be ready to go. 4 minutes and 37 seconds capacitor time. 1.1 km is the signature radius with the micro updrive and it goes 1.8 km per second. Overall, very nice. It is a very fast battleship. Faster than the Macariel and faster, definitely faster than some other faction battleships. Except the Nestor, which is ridiculously fast. Okay, let's take a look at the um, range of the rapid missiles with the missile guidance computer activated well the explosion velocity and radius looks look pretty good i'm very happy with those numbers can easily can easily shoot down frigates and other interceptors at 83.3 kilometers very nice that's with one one computer with dual computers that range is around 120 kilometers and that is still uh, very nice no interceptor, no frigate, no cruiser is going to be safe from your rapid missiles, even at 100 kilometers if you are flying the Typhoon too. So yeah, tackling this ship is going to be dangerous. Now let's take a look at the other missiles. I have cruise missiles here. 
when I sacrifice one adaptive, the, the overall, overall resistance will be a little bit lower, but still you will be relying on speed and range to avoid. Okay, sorry for the weird cut. Now let's take a look at the cruise missile parameters. 179 km cold range, decent explosion velocity and decent explosion radius. The rest of the stats are going to be roughly the same. 1.1 km per second is the signature radius when the micro op drive is running. With one computer active, the range is 257 kilometers, that's ridiculous already. And with dual computers active, that's 325 kilometer range with the cruise missiles. 109 meter is the explosion radius, and 185 meter per second is the explosion velocity. 8 kilometer per second is the cruise missile velocity. You know, this is actually very, very ridiculous range. And... Uh, should be enough for, I think, everything in the game. Should be enough for encounters, should be enough for storyline missions. Should be enough even for PvP if you want to be a sniper with with the Typhoon. Now, I know you are interested to see the missile range on the space pan, 306 kilometers with one, and with dual computers the range should be 387 kilometers. Well, um, okay, that's uh, almost 400 kilometer range with the crude missiles on the space pan. Yeah, definitely more than enough for PvP, PvE, or even, or even I don't know. I don't even know why you need so much range, honestly. But let's take a look at how how this ship will perform in. A, a random mission. Now uh, I'll be doing some manual flying here. First let's do something silly. Let's see how long it will take for the cruise missiles to reach that bomber from 200 plus kilometers. I will go and try to launch the missile from, from a ridiculous range. I have dual guidance computers so the range the maximum range should be 325 kilometers the missiles are going 8 kilometers per second so it will take a while for the missiles to reach the target but that's one thing one thing to talk about it the other thing to actually do it so let's actually go and take range after that I will go and clear the targets with a manual flying the Typhoon can be flown uh, with this build easily in storyline missions and you really don't have to worry about anyone jumping in your mission because the maximum range that other players can jump at you is 100 kilometers and you are going to be already moving with the mic warp drive or afterburner so it's really difficult to reach this ship you can easily warp away when needed well then, missiles away, and <laughs> now let's see uh, how long it will take for the missiles to reach the bomber at 306, the missile was launched at 308 kilometers. Well, you can easily track the missiles flying, I launched two missiles by accident, the first one is going to reach the target in, I don't know, a couple seconds I think, there we go. First hit, and the bomber was almost destroyed. Very nice. Okay, enough uh, enough of that. Let's now uh, go closer and let's shoot down those ships. You can make you can make the ship with 200 or 250 kilometer range without the missile guidance computers active, if you like. I think it's possible. I guess I will have to do it one day, but a nice balance is also a very important. Launched missiles at that interceptor from 210 kilometers, so it will take a while for the missiles to reach the interceptor, but it will reach, don't worry, the missiles have enough range, you can actually see the missiles flying towards those ships. With the space pan, it's actually 
a lot faster. And you know that you are firing from a very long distance when you have the warp option when you click on the target. That is some extreme range. So, uh, I see this build being used in storyline missions in low sec and in encounters because it offers extreme safety from uh, interceptors and other ships. You should be safe against an Ortus or any other cruiser for that matter because you are already going to be around 200 kilometers away from the mission beacon so if the target, well if the hunter is warping towards you at 100 kilometers, they are going to be over 100 kilometers away from you. And that's more than enough time to burn away to a station or, or a gate, or enough time to shoot the, shoot the ship down. So you have plenty of options on how to deal with hunters joining your mission. But uh, I, I would definitely uh, say that it would be the best to keep your ship aligned at the long range. And if anything warps in, you simply warp away. Or you can even use warp core optimizers and you don't have to worry much about scramblers. For a scrambler to work, the hunter needs to be around... I would say 20 kilometers average from your ship, depends on the ship that is engaging you. Ortus can scramble your ship at 21 km, while other ships have range up to 16 or 18 kilometers. So you are safe from scramblers. You are even safe from long range points, which work on average around 45 km, some work at 55 km, and very rarely you will see 60 km points. You are going to be at 150 km from the nearest enemy, so you have really plenty of time to warp away or shoot down the, the hunter if they decide to jump in your system. Now, you still don't have to worry about that because the Typhoon is one of the best ships that can deal with interceptors or other cruisers, especially after we consider the fact that it has the best missile application damage in the game. Now I will go closer to the Megatron Strike, I'm at 148 kilometers away. I really don't remember the ship having so much range, I kinda forgot what type of build did I use on the previous Typhoon 2 video that I did a while ago, but still the range on, on this thing is ridiculous and I found out that the damage application is a lot more important than the raw missile damage on these ships. And so far, the Typhoon is really fun to use. And what is also very interesting, the skill requirements for this ship are not that bad, honestly. You really only need the basic skills for the missiles and battleships in order to fly the Typhoon. And that is very exciting and very nice. Okay, I have swapped my build into the rapid missile built with the Typhoon. I added a little bit more tank, I have sacrificed one guidance computer for another adaptive shield hardener, although honestly the speed tank on this ship is more than enough to sustain the shield. And again, you can easily use dual, dual computers for the rapid missile launchers as well. It works really well against frigates and interceptors, let me just say that right away. If you don't like interceptors, if you don't like those, those fast little ships, then the Typhoon is the ship for you. <laughs> because if an interceptor tries to tackle you at 50 kilometers, or Daredevil or any other ship, you just slap them with the rapid missiles and, well, they will have to warp away. If they don't warp, they will lose the ship. So, uh, this is one of the reasons why, why so many players love the Typhoon. And I also love this ship. 
cannot wait to actually start using this thing into PvP. Currently, I'm playing around with the Hyperion. And the Hyperion is using the exact same fit that I did show here before I actually started to fly it. That Hyperion is truly tankier than I have expected. Definitely tankier than I have expected. That ship blew my expectations. It's amazing. As for the good old Typhoon, well, uh, I believe I will have the same experience with this ship. I plan... I have some very, very nice ideas that I will use the Typhoon for, and I think he will also enjoy that. Let's say I plan to shoot some capitals. Let's just leave it at that, because at the moment I actually prefer the Typhoon over the Space Pen, although I would say the Space Pen does a little bit more damage, but the Typhoon does apply the damage a little bit better, so when you compile all of those numbers, you actually find out that damage application is actually a lot more important, and the Space Pen is a very big target. Everyone wants to shoot down a Space Pen, but the Typhoon does not have that type of attention on it, so the ship is, in that aspect, a lot safer to fly than the space pen. However, the space pen has longer range and can easily play around with capital ships at 300 kilometers, and that is something impressive. Uh, rapid missiles are doing uh, really good damage so far. They have a very nice rate of fire. Practically, if you have dual computers, dual guidance computers, then you can fire off around 8 to 12 missiles at a interceptor that's orbiting at 45, 40, 50 kilometers. And each hit will do a lot of damage to the interceptor. And of course, you have to remember that the interceptors don't have a lot of shield, don't have a lot of armor, so they will lose shield and armor very quickly. And personally, I haven't, I haven't had a problem with interceptors in a very long time. The last 50 or the last 100 interceptors that tried to shoot any of my ship down were all destroyed. And I was flying a ship that was built to fight battleships. So interceptors are not that big of a threat. You just know, you just need to know how to effectively counter them. And so far. The Typhoon does does that very, very well. Okay, well, uh, let's go towards the last wave. I have swapped the micro drive into a afterburner. We'll still use the rapid missile launchers. The rapid missile launchers are the perfect balance between range and damage. Crude missiles are also really nice. And if you like long-range combat, then cruise missiles will be the way to go. But in my case, I love the rapid missile launchers on the Typhoon. They are doing a very nice job so far. Now let me just quickly take a look at the speed with the afterburner. 851. Well, that's not bad. I can make it. I can definitely make it a lot faster. I think I have one auxiliary thruster rig on the Typhoon, one of the auxiliary thrusters, but the Typhoon feels, feels like it should be using a micro warp drive, if, especially if you orbit at medium to long range. From my personal experience, I found out that ships that orbit while running the mission are very difficult to catch. And from my personal experience, ships that used neutralizers and target painters in some cases were able to defend themselves really efficiently. The main thing that you should keep in mind is to have a good fit on your ship. And if you have a good fit, if you know what you're doing with the ship, then you don't have to worry about anyone jumping in your mission or you don't have to worry about anyone 
in low sec or no sec. A bomber will die very fast from a typhoon. Interceptors will also die very quickly. And if you are maintaining a orbit, then even if you're tackled, you have time to shoot down the tackle and to warp away before the main fleet arrives. And that has proven itself to be uh, very efficient. I know a lot of players who do that and who haven't lost a ship in a very long time. In my case, I haven't I haven't been doing a storyline mission in a very long time. I think it, a year has passed since I ran the, the last storyline mission. If I do encounters, I do high stake encounters with my Macario, but that happens very rarely. Mostly because I'm I'm busy shooting other ships down or busy doing something different. And I love the fact that each of the tier 10 battleships have has it, it, its own thing. The Hyperion for example has insane repairs but this ship is not that fast and it has very poor range and tracking but it's super tanky. Abaddon has a good tank good armor, but it's extremely slow. It has good DPS, good damage, and overall lasers are very nice. Tempest and Malstorm are also really nice ships. Tempest a good brawler and sniper, Malstorm a very good tank and a very good brawler. The Typhoon, well, uh, you already know what I, what I what I say about the Typhoon, that thing is absolutely insane, I love the Typhoon. And I think I missed, the Raven Striker is, is okay, it can be very tanky but the Striker mode on that thing is, is not the best, let's just keep it at that. But it does uh, very nice overall damage outside of the Striker mode and can be super tanky. So practically every every tier 10 battleship has its own thing. All of these ships have their own strength and weaknesses that you should know and of course make sure to take advantage of the strength and of course make sure to avoid all the weakness of weakness, weak spots of the ship. That way you will make sure that your ships run really well. Well then, uh, that will be for the Typhoon for now. Definitely looking forward to fly the ship into PvP. You know me, uh, when I say that I'll fly something in PvP, I definitely will. The Hyperion did go through the same process and the Typhoon is now completing the same process and I'm very excited to see what type of, what type of kills I'll get with the Typhoon. Initially I thought to go with the Typhoon first and then with the Hyperion, but then I, I saw the super tank of the Hyperion and then I just decided to go with the Hyperion for now. But after the Hyperion has completed its journey, it would be time to go and take out the Typhoon out for a spin. And well, with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.